Guys, it's Adam with webstarts.com. In this short video, I'll be showing you how to create a homeowners association website using webstarts. It's going to allow people in your community to log into the back end of your website where they can access information for people who are specifically members of your website. Before I get into the video, I do wanna invite you to tap the subscribe button and also ring the notification bell. That way you'll be the first to find out when I release a new video on internet marketing, search engine optimization, web design, and similar topics. Let's dive in. Let's start by going to webstarts.com where we're going to select a template and sign up for a free account. So if you click on get started, it's free. And the next step, you'll be selecting a template. It says here, choose the design. Each template is 100% customizable and can be changed at any time. So you can't make a mistake. Just choose the one that you think fits best for what you're trying to do. And in this video, of course, we're talking about creating a homeowners association website. So I'm gonna select the business category and then I'm going to select real estate and try to find a template specifically designed for a homeowners association. So I'm just going to scroll down here and this is the design that I'm going to select. All right, here you can see it says homeowners association. I hover over that and I click select. In this next step, I'm going to go ahead and provide the information that usually you provide when you're signing up for an account, like your email address, your name, and of course, select a password. If you're ready to go to the next step, you'll need to enter your phone number to verify that you're a real person and that you're authentic. I will do that real quick and then I'll meet you on the other side. All right, I verified my phone number and now I'm ready to select a web address for my website. Now here you can choose from one of two options. The first option is totally free and that's just using a .webstarts.com subdomain name for your website. The second option is to use your very own domain name like whatever the name is of your homeowners association.com, .net, .org, that kind of thing. If you select this option over here, it will require you to upgrade to a paid subscription before that domain can be connected to your website and that begins to work. So if you just wanna move forward without risking signing up for something and paying, then just go ahead and uh, select the domain name here. So I'm just gonna say hoademo.webstarts.com and then click continue. If you don't even wanna bother with this, just click choose later and you can do all of that later. Once you click continue, you're going to move on to what's called the dashboard. That's the first page that you see when you sign up for a Web Starts account. All right, I'm in the dashboard and I can see a thumbnail of my template. And when I hover over that thumbnail, I can click edit site to begin editing that site. But before I show you that, I want to show you around the dashboard. Here you have all of these other applications that you can use with your Web Starts account. Like for example, you can upload files and folders. You can activate a store, a blog. You can use email marketing, set up roles and permissions, which is very helpful if you have an HOA website because that allows you to create usernames for other people who maybe are on the board, that kind of thing. And then down here at the bottom, we have the site members application that we're going to be working with in this video as well. I'm gonna show you what it's like to edit your website. Just click on edit site. That opens up the page editor view. This is where you can begin to make edits and changes to the pages of your website. You can double click on any one of these text boxes and then just change the content. So if you wanna change this template to say the name of your homeowners association, you would do that here. You can also do things like change the font size and the font style and just about everything that you could imagine. If you wanna work on a different page, just select another page of your website from this drop down menu, and then you'll be able to edit that other page. So let me just show you what that looks like. And if you wanna create a new page, just click create new page. You can create a new blank page or you can just copy an existing page. Copying an existing page is kind of nice because it saves you the time of creating an entirely new layout for your page. Speaking of that, one thing you, I want to call your attention to is that each one of the pages of your website are divided into three different sections. The top section is called the header and that's everything above this dotted line right here that's highlighted in green. When you drag 
elements to your header, they appear in the same location on the top of every page of your website. That's done so that when you put something like this menu up here or this sign in or your logo, that it doesn't confuse people by um, having them, forcing them to hunt around on each page to find that navigation. And then you don't need to copy and paste and try to put things in the exact same spot on each page. And the footer works similarly. That's everything below this dotted line here. And then you have this third section, which is just your body. And that's the main section where you'll be dragging and dropping elements. So you can double click on just about any element to swap it out. So if you wanted to use a different image, you could just select a different image from uh, the photo library, or you can upload your own image from your local computer, that sort of thing. Just like what I've done there. You can do that with all of these images as well. So it's pretty much double click on anything to change it. If you wanna mess with the style, let's say the style of this button, you can click on the style brush and then you can change the style of the button. Up here, you'll find undo and redo as well. Those might be helpful things for you to use. Now, specific for the Homeowners Association website, I'm going to be looking at this membership login right here. And by double clicking on that membership login, I open up the membership app. The membership app lets you make certain pages of your website accessible only by people who are members of your website. So they'll have to provide a username and password in order to log in and view specific pages. So here you can see in the membership wizard, the first question is, would you like this page to be accessible to members only? The answer to this question in this case is no, but only because this is the homepage of my website and I don't want to require people to log in to see the homepage. But let's say that this was a members only area, then I would say, yes, I only want to allow people who are members to view the page. Once you've made that decision, click continue and you go to the next page. And the next page is going to ask you, where would you like to send people after they log into your website? So if you have a members only area, maybe that is even a blog, for instance, you would select that from the drop down menu. If you have yet to create a page for your members only, then go ahead and just create a new page and then go back through this wizard and select it from the drop down menu. Click continue and you go to the next question and it asks you, would you like new members to be automatically approved or do you want to manually approve them? I usually mark that I'd like to manually approve them just because I'm not dealing with a ton of new members and I really wanna know who's signing up, when they're signing up, that kind of thing. So click continue after you've made that decision. And then in the final step, it'll ask whether you would like there to be a member login widget on this page. And if you would like there to be one, then you select yes. I've already placed one in the header up here, so it's available. Now, once people go to your website, and I'll show you what that looks like, they will uh, see the option to either sign up or log in. If they click log in, they'll provide their email address and password to log in, and then they'll be sent to that page that you specified where you would like uh, members to be sent after they log in. And if they sign up, since I'm automatically approving each member, I'm going to be sent an email notification, and they'll also see a push notification on the dashboard of my website. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll go back out to my dashboard and you'll get a little notification right up here. Now, I don't have any notifications at the moment, of course, because I haven't asked anybody to sign up. Now, once people do sign up, you'll access this site members app and that's where you'll approve your new members. You can also add new members manually by clicking this option here. You'll provide their name, email address, and select a password for them. You can do things like change the email address that you'll be sending the membership access information from. And then you can also edit your members. So if somebody forgot their password, for example, you'll be able to come in and reset their password for them so they can get back in. Well, that's about it for this particular a video on how to create a homeowners association website using web starts. If you ever have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment. Don't forget to visit webstarts.com to create your very own free homeowners association website and see more helpful videos like this one here. And you can always email us at support at webstarts.com if you need a little bit more help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.